What's up guys, this is Alexander King. Now, welcome back, I guess, to this mini sleep token marathon <laughs> on this channel. So, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, if this is the first video that you're checking out, I am going to listen to the whole record and just record my reaction to three songs specifically, which were the most requested ones. The first one was Chokehold that we did. Uh, I mean, I just did it like five minutes ago, literally, uh, because I want to listen to the album in, in its entirety, because that's kind of the way that I enjoy music. Uh, we're doing The Summoning right now, which is the second one and by far the biggest request that I got. And the last one will be the title track, so take me back to Eden. Um, so yeah, guys, without further ado, uh, uh, if you want to understand a bit more of the, my background with this band and what I knew going into this, uh, I, I explained already everything in the other video, in the other reaction. Uh, what I can say is that I got hooked big time, perfect opener of a record with Chokehold, fantastic uh, uh, voice, especially voice delivery and soundscape, incredible, the way they build it out with the powerful riffs, ah, fantastic. Anyway, without too much ado, <laughs> as always, let's check out the summoning, guys. Let's go. Okay. We're going straight in this time. <laughs> no, you're building up. Space, guys. It's something you say something the one thing that is striking me the most is song is just the way that they use space. It's so good and it's so rare in today's music. Breaking drums. The way he went into that falsetto was so smooth. This is a huge chorus, guys. My god. Went from this almost janky to this like 70s prog rock guitar solo. The piano is so beautiful. Chorus again, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> the song structure is all over the place, I love it. It's contrast again, guys. It reminds me a lot of uh, Black Gaze, like Death Heaven. Take this now. Oh, 
I also love how minimalist the music videos are, like, kind of put the focus on the music. Soundscape, the sound design is gorgeous. Oh my god. And the piano, the reverb. I wonder if they're building up for a breakdown or. Early 70s funk music, my god. Oh my god. So groovy. Those backing vocals, gorgeous again, reminds me a lot of Ozio. layers it's stacked up so well and it's bigger and bigger but they keep the same elements oh so good <laughs> There is one thing that I'm very passionate about, guys, and this is the perfect representation. It's if I ask you, what was the last time that you listened to a record or a song, uh, an artist in general, and you were absolutely cluel clueless as to where the song was going to go? Like you get that kind of excitement while you listen to it, because you don't know what's going to happen. It's something that's absolutely incredible. It's it's gorgeous, guys, and especially because you know, I'm not saying that there aren't bands out there that uh, mix genres or um, try to you know throw in something that's very random in a song to create that effect. But one thing is doing that just for the sake of doing that, and you know maybe create a, a bit of a shock uh, in the listener, maybe also for you know, uh, how do you say, to incentivize reaction videos <laughs> because maybe you shock someone with a very heavy breakdown uh, that doesn't fit into the song at all so one thing is doing this, one thing is actually pulling it off and making it cohesive and I think that the key guys for this whole thing to work is the space it's what I was saying uh, during the, I guess, the pre-70s funk breakdown <laughs> It's just the the way that they use space allows you to, in a way, digest what you've just listened to, but also build up towards the next section. And if you leave enough time and enough space, and again, with this very atmospheric and ethereal uh, soundscaping, I want to call that soundscaping because I can't really say there are riffs or, um, you know, keys, uh, progression or something like that. It's just very ethereal scenes uh, most of the part with like gorgeous reverb piano which by the way 
pay attention to this uh, it, it, maybe it's something that you can pick up with some very good monitors or some very good headphones but um, during the guitar solo which was beautiful again something different in the guitar solo world which as a guitar player it's something that has me very happy <laughs> but also listen to the the way that the guitar solo works with the piano because it's something absolutely gorgeous both uh, in uh, in production wise so the way that they're placed and they don't steal each other's space so they co-work together the piano is a bit more on the sides and on the background uh, but it just um, works as the perfect uh, backing for the guitar solo which is of course the star of the show uh, but again this space and they take their time like it's a six minute song the first one that we listened to chuckled was like uh, four and a half, five minutes or something like that. It's not the three minutes song, which it's... Uh, I think it's the main difference also between these songs that I'm listening to now and the ones that... the, the one mostly that I listened to uh, before, which is Alkaline. Very nice song, again, as I said, I really enjoy that. But it's much more straightforward, so they don't have the time to expand all the possibilities that can come up, like they do in a track like this, or in Ascensionism, which also was fantastic under that point of view in the development and the mixing of genres. This is probably the craziest because it just works and I don't understand how, because if I read this on paper and it's like gent, um, ambient, uh, progressive rock and funk or something like that, like on paper this doesn't make any sense, but it works. Uh, of course the line that keeps it I think there are two things that keep everything together besides the use of space, as I said, which are his voice, which is phenomenal, and he just works and he manages to adapt it um, perfectly from section to section. And for me, the um, the most impressive thing about this song is the chorus by far. The chorus is gorgeous and it's huge, like live. This thing must blow the roof off of the place where they play, which I don't know if, if it's already arenas <laughs> or something like that. I see 40 million views, so they're, they're doing good. I don't know if, if they're already at arenas level, but I I'm starting to understand the hype also more because it can appeal to a lot of things. And again, it sounds like the type of music that when you discover you want to spread the word. It's like you want to reach out to your friend and send a message and it's like, man, listen to this, look what I just discovered. Uh, which is kind of what happened uh, as well with me and how I got back into them. Um, because as good as Alkaline was, uh, I wasn't particularly excited about uh, the band, uh, which is something that has dramatically changed just by listening to three of the latest songs. Um, yeah, guys, this was phenomenal. Oh, and before I forget, the, the second line that keeps it all together are the drums. The drummer is outstanding. The way that he syncopates, especially during the chorus, uh, it just keeps it together. Like he makes it groovy, even in the sections that are a bit more uh, uh, not dissonant, but uh, they aren't very regular, especially when it comes to the rhythm and maybe the tempo. I didn't. I'm not the best at calculating anyway. <laughs> like one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, and stuff like that. Uh, but there were, of course, sections, especially during the breakdown, which felt a bit um, odd when it comes to the time signature. But he manages to keep it all together, which is something that I think only the great drummers manage to achieve. And the one that comes to my mind, the ones actually that come to my mind are Danny Carey and Habe Cunningham from Deftones. Um, Danny Carey from Tool, of course. Uh, but they're the two drummers that manage to keep a groove going all the time even if the structure of the song is extremely complicated and that is crucial because it allows also someone that maybe is not that much into progressive and odd time signatures to just enjoy the song anyway um, it's so difficult uh, i'm not a drummer personally i do play the drums from time to time but coming up with a drum part like that is something honestly wow blows my mind every time so heads off to the guy and yeah guys i guess that this was it for the summoning phenomenal song honestly i think at the moment might be the best one that i've listened to from them uh now i'm going to keep listening to the record until i get to take me back to eden and then we're going to check that out together as well so guys if you enjoyed this video let me know what you think, of course, if you already knew the band. Uh, subscribe if you want to see the, the rest of this mini sleep token 
saga marathon <laughs> subscribe to make sure you don't miss the remainders of this mini sleep token saga marathon whatever it is <laughs> that we're calling it uh, also if you're curious to check out what i do as a musician and producer my latest single berlin is out now um Oddly enough, it's something that I try to do with my music, blending different genres in a way, but in a very different way. And if you're curious to check that out, of course, I, I, will link, uh, I will leave a link for that down in the description or the comment and stuff like that. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I guess that I'll see you at the Take Me Back to Eden reaction. Cheers.